case, this demonstration is going to end with a legacy cry to tribute to the past, a tribute to those who have gone before us in this beautiful airplane from the Plains of Fame Museum here in California, not so far away, and one of the most storied aviators when it comes to this type of flying, Steve Hinton. Steve's son taught, taught Tom Cruise how to fly and that whole Mustang story. We'll tell you more about Steve for the rest of the uh, the rest of the year. Having such a great time in the Rhino as they get ready to set up for their takeoff and then following this demonstration, uh, the Rhino and this Bearcat, that's what it is. The Bearcat will fly together in the legacy flight and tribute to those who have gone before us. Good morning, March Air Reserve Base. My name is Lieutenant Perkins, call sign Trash Blaster from Georgetown, Texas. I'll be the narrator for today's West Coast Rhino demonstration team. On the stand with me is Lieutenant Dave Sands from Northville, Michigan. He'll be our safety observer. On behalf of the United States Navy Naval Air Station Lemoore, Commander Strike Fighter Wing Pacific, and the commanding officer of Strike Fighter Squadron 122, we are proud to present the West Coast F-18 Super Hornet flight demonstration. Intended to replace the retired F-14 Tomcat and aging Legacy Hornets, the Boeing-built F-18 Super Hornet is the Navy's frontline tactical aircraft. Known as the Rhino, the Super Hornet builds on the combat-proven design of the original Hornet with improvements such as 30% larger surface area, a larger payload, longer range capability, and increased weapons lethality. Well, from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, we'll demonstrate the incredible flight characteristics of the Super Hornet along with his weapons systems officer, Lieutenant Evan Bocart, call sign Tommy Boy, from College Park, Florida. Both crew have experience in flying numerous sorties for Operation Inherent Resolve and Western Stability and other operations around the globe. During this flight, Hannah and Tommy Boy will experience G-forces from negative three and up to eight times the normal force of gravity as they maneuver the aircraft to the edge of the operating envelope. Today's show will be performed at speeds as fast as 700 miles per hour and as slow as 100 miles per hour. Many of the maneuvers you will see here today demonstrate the aircraft's capabilities in the tactical arena and are employed during combat and training flights. Four turbofan engines pull up to their maximum power. Lieutenant Sherwood and Lieutenant Bocart will pull the aircraft into a 40 degree nose up climb, perform a 360 degree roll while raising the landing gear. We call this maneuver the dirty roll. The Super Hornet is unique in its ability to operate at slow speeds and high angles of attack. The flight control computers allow the aircraft to precisely position the aircraft when and where the pilot and weapon systems operator need to. Observe to the left how the aircraft will rotate 180 degrees while in a nearly flat attitude, aptly named a flat pirouette. Your time. 
The Super Hornet's engines produce over 44,000 pounds of thrust in full afterburner. This allows the aircraft to sustain eight times the force of gravity in a very tight turn radius. Whether in dogfight or boarding surface to air threats, the ability of the Super Hornet to turn in very tight space gives us a tremendous tactical advantage. quickly performing a vertical reposition to the jet be reoriented back towards the Earth for the next maneuver. Entering the maneuver at 350 knots, the air crew will pull the jet to the vertical and roll the canopy towards the crowd. Selecting full afterburner's air speeds approach to 220 miles per hour, they'll perform a very enjoyable negative 3G pushover to set up for the Show center, the air crew will rapidly reposition the nose four times, flying a square path through the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, from the left, the square loop.
for the high alpha pass. This maneuver will showcase the incredible slow speed handling characteristics of the Super Hornet. In air-to-air -air combat, sometimes it's the aircraft with the ability to fly the slowest that will have the tactical advantage. Few other aircraft in the world would attempt to maneuver at this slow speed and nose-high attitude. The two flight control systems aiding the aircrew, the 40,000-pound F-18 Sigourner remains completely controllable at less than 100 miles per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, from the left, the High Alpha Pass. As America progresses through the 21st century, it becomes increasingly important that we reflect on our nation's proud history, the people, events, and technological advances which we have made our country great. By remembering, appreciating, and fully understanding the touchstones of our past, we will be able to more successfully chart the course for America's future. Over 70 years since the conclusion of the Second World War, a number of aircraft which flew from the carrier decks during that conflict are still in is the F-18 Super Hornet, representing strike fighter of today's carrier Navy. The Super Hornet, seen earlier performing its dynamic flight demonstration, is again flown by Lieutenant Garrett Sherwood, call sign Hannah, and Lieutenant Evan Bogart, call sign Tommy Boy.
Legacy Head-On Pass. pitch out the opposite direction of its lead and reverse coming back for uh, proper separation for the carrier brake and landing. We hope you have enjoyed today's Legacy Tail Hook flight demonstration and have gained a better appreciation for and understanding of the rich heritage and ever continuing development of Navy carrier aviation. For those of you in the crowd who represent America's leadership of tomorrow, we hope you have been inspired by what you have seen here this afternoon and will consider joining the Naval Aviation team. Ladies and gentlemen, the job of a naval aviator is not complete until the aircraft is back aboard its floating home. The approach to the carrier is often the most dangerous part of a naval aviator's mission. Landing your aircraft at 130 miles per hour and a few hundred feet of floating steel is extremely challenging and a matter of great pride. Ladies and gentlemen, from the left, watch as Lieutenant Sherwood, call sign handle, Lieutenant Bocar, call sign Tommy Boy, perform the left carrier break to full stop landing. March Air Reserve Base. And I'd like to provide you one final yeah. note. Please, when Lieutenant Sherwood and Lieutenant Bocar taxi by today, this is their final demonstration for the West Coast Rhino demonstration team. Uh, please provide them a warm round of applause as they come by, uh, and thank you for your time. They're la the, the season's just beginning for crying out loud, but you guys share seats and everything, right? So this is the last, and then and you're flying tomorrow. That's affirmative, yeah. I will fly tomorrow with, uh, with uh, Roomba here, and uh, we are actually taking over the team lead from Hannah for the remainder of the season. Outstanding. Trash, thank you. And the rest of the team, let's hear it for the entire team, ladies and gentlemen, from the Navy, your West Coast Rhino demonstration team. We're going to get them back on the ground. They will take... take off and then we're going to turn things over to Sammy and the team and prepare for G because this is outstanding flying precision aerobatics at its best There's to come silent flight something completely different as Boyd gets ready now to be towed into the wild blue yonder gracefully and then we're going to turn things over to Sammy Watch now as the most efficient wing at the airport today. You see the wing walker? Right above. Will not lift the tail of the tow plane too quickly. So off they go, slowly but surely to climb up to altitude to release. And then we're going to tell you all about sky ceiling as the rhino gets ready to taxi in. 
And Sandy gets ready to test. There's just so much stuff going on. It's just one thing after the other. Do we hand over to them? So remember, these guys, as they taxi by, they're shy. Give them a huge wave. The Navy. Steve Hinton.